As they say, sometimes your own family will be your biggest haters. How to deal with jealous family members and siblings. But first, like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. How to deal with jealous family members and siblings. A lot of people can't understand the idea of a family member, a brother or sister being jealous of one another, but it's very much a reality for many people. You see, a lot of times with family members, because they saw you growing up, because they saw you and they remember you as a child, as a teenager, maybe when you were growing up, you were more timid, more shy. Maybe you allowed them to bully you. But as you grow up and they see you evolving as a woman, they can't understand sometimes how you two came from the same background, from the same environment, from the same possible household, and yet you are so much different than them. See, some people are truly a victim of their circumstances, not because they had to become that, but because they chose to become that. You see, what'll happen with many family members, they will see someone who came out of the same environment. You might have grew up in a household where there was a lot of turmoil, a lot of chaos, a lot of substance abuse, a lot of domestic violence, a lot of drama. And yet, you chose to go a different path. You chose peace for your life. You chose that the moment you became an adult, you decided that you're going to leave that environment and not become the next one in line to be dysfunctional. But you have some family members, they didn't make that choice. They chose to wallow in the filth and in the negativity of their environment in which they came from until this day, they are still there. And because of that, they might display jealousy toward you. Sometimes people like that, family members like that, they like to make you or try to make you feel bad because you chose better for your life. You see, a lot of people have this mindset that you can't forget where you came from. And while you might not ever forget where you came from, if where you came from was toxic, negative, and everybody was doing something that was miserable all the time, you absolutely should remove yourself from that environment. Remove your mind from that environment. I know for me, going back to the area, the neighborhood where I came from, that's not a good feeling for me. So I rarely go back there. I haven't been back to that neighborhood, that city, that state in almost five years. And it's because to me, I have family members sprinkled throughout that I absolutely love and adore. I love all of my family. However, because of the situation and how things were and you know all the stuff that I was dealing with there, it doesn't bring me joy to go back into that type of environment. So I'm not going to continue to put myself in places where I no longer have to be. And when people are jealous of you, they don't understand that kind of thinking. They tend to think that you think you're better than this. You're better than that. They don't understand that you don't have to be a victim your entire life. People with the victim mentality will always display jealousy toward people who chose something better or different than what they came from. So when you have family members, once again, going back to the fact that they saw you growing up, maybe when you were a young woman, you were shy, you were quiet, you didn't really say much. You dealt with loud, boisterous, overbearing men and women alike. You dealt with things that you had no control over. Those of us who grew up in environments where people were dealing with substances, we were dealing with a lot of instability. So you might have had people around you that you didn't know. Mama and them knew these people. You had a new auntie or uncle every day, but you didn't know those people. And the moment you grew up, you decided, I'm not going to deal with this kind of stuff. I don't want to be around those type of people. And even that very statement in of itself, those type of people, someone who is jealous or envious or chose to stay miserable, they will look at you as if you're saying something or doing something wrong because you chose better. When people are jealous, they are more apt to 
not want to come around you because being in your very environment, no matter how humble your environment might be, you might not be a millionaire. You might not be somebody who's doing something so grand, so great. You might be living the average ordinary life. But for somebody, one of your family members who chose to stay stuck or that's all they know, because I know a lot of people say, well, they can't help it. That's all they know. When you get to a certain point in life and you become an adult, you can't use that as an excuse that that's all you know. There's so much opportunity out here for people to grow, to learn, to go into different environments. For goodness sake, if somebody has the ability to hop on a bus and go into a nicer part of town, you have seen better. You just choose not to go into that environment because a lot of times with jealous people, it comes back to their own insecurity. It has very little to do with you. It's just that you were bold enough to step out in faith and do what they would not do. So when a family member sees you and sees that you were actually in that same environment, y'all grew up in the same hood, dealing with the same people, dealing with the same thing, and yet you are not like them, you're not the one that's going to just run into trouble. You're not the pop-off queen. I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. Me and my brother, my youngest brother, I absolutely love him. I love him to this day. But because I did not live up to the ghetto standard that he had for me, because I had a standard for my own life, he chose to abandon me, to neglect me. I haven't spoken to my brother, my youngest brother, since my daughter turned 12 and she's now 17. So that's been five years. And... It's all because I chose to put me first. It's all because I chose not to allow someone to belittle me and berate me because I chose better for my life. You see, when people have that little hidden jealousy, your family members have that little je jealousy against you, they feel like they need to remind you of where you came from. They need to remind you that, oh, we was raised by the same mom and dad. I don't know who you think you are. I don't know this. I don't know that. And it could be over something very little. See, with jealous family members, they will forget about everything you did for them. They will forget about how you've been there for them. They will forget about how you, you know, you, you took care of them, whatever you did. And it's not that you're doing those things because you want somebody to clap for you or you want you're being a family member but to that point this specific family member they will do certain things for you my family member was doing things for me I'm thinking they're doing it out of the kindness of their heart and this is what you will really see when you realize that family members are jealous when times get hard or when you put your foot down on something they will remind you of all the things they did for you. They always have that you owe me one mentality. That's not true family. That's not true family values. That's not genuine love and support and care for one another. That you're doing things just so you can have a you owe me card. That's not how family works. Of course, relationships should be reciprocated. So if you love your family members, you do for one another, but you don't do for one another just so you can say, if it wasn't for me, you're doing this. I bought you shoes last week, so you're obligated to do this. That's how messy family members can be. And that's not just jealousy. That's just purity messiness. When you have a family member who, and sometimes that's the reason for me because of what I went through, I think before I allow somebody, especially a family member, to do something for me. Not all my family members, but certain family members. I really think before I allow them to do something for me. Because I don't need the drama and this is the whole jealous, negative, toxic side of family that I know there's some people on here that probably be in the comments saying, I've never experienced this. I have a very close-knit family. My family loved me. La, 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 la congratulations you are so blessed praise God for your family but that is not everybody's reality I'm speaking to the majority not the minority all right but when you're dealing with toxic negative family members back to when they do things for you only 
to hold it against you later. These are the things that you kind of have to look out for when you receive help from family. That's the reason why you hear stories of people saying, I will go to a shelter first before I go to so-and-so in them's house, before I do this. You know, sometimes that can be pride on the part of the other family member, but sometimes your peace of mind is worth figuring it out on your own when it comes to family members. So back to my original story. The whole time I'm thinking that this family member, he's just buying little things for me and, you know, treating me here, treating me there. I'm a girl. He's a guy. I'm a girl. He's a guy. I figure, you know, that's my, that's my brother. That's my baby brother. He loves me and we're doing this. I've done things for him. We just, that's how it is. Until later on, when I put my foot down on something that is not related to what we were doing in the moment, he felt the need to just drag up everything he's done for me, everything he's bought me. I would do this. I would do that. You forget this. You forget that. Because see, jealous people, envious people, toxic people, they don't like to hear the word no. And that's the one way you will know if somebody is jealous and toxic, especially a family member, let you tell them no or let you put a boundary in place. That's when you will see, as they say, their true colors. So when you're dealing with a jealous family member, they always want you to be at their beck and call. And if you're not, then they will remind you of where you came from, the one thing they did for you. My goodness, if they got down and tied your shoe one day, if they're a jealous, negative, toxic family member, they will remind you about the time they tied your shoe. I know it sounds very petty, but these are some of the things that you have to watch out for with negative, toxic, jealous family members. And then also how you can protect yourself from jealous family members is, in my opinion, number one, do not tell them all of your business. See, for me, the way I've always been, the only people that are really privy to know some of my like personal business, like some of my relationship and things with my children are my mother and my father. And as I've said before, my mother passed away before I became really of adult age. So I didn't really have that relationship with her. But my father, thank God, he's still living 75 and fine, doing well. But I don't even really give too much of my information to my father because it's like, what can you do? That's just for me. I'm like, if you can't do something, I'm not really a woman that just wants to just vent to everybody just because. It's like, if you can't do anything about this situation, why am I telling you? And I don't like to burden my father either, but I digress. But your mother, your father, your mother-in-law, you know, your father-in-law, those are like the close-knit family members that I would say, if you feel like you need to give out any information or you need to vent or really talk to someone, those are the safe family members, depending on whether or not they're jealous or toxic, that you can do so with. But some of you who get on the phone and call up these cousins and aunties and relatives, the moment things are going awry in your marriage or with your children, Sometimes you have to understand that some people are waiting for your downfall. Some people are waiting for something just to get out of whack so they can have something to talk about because your life is just a little too perfect. Your life is a little too, you know, it's like that wow value of something happening to you. I know this all sounds very crazy, but when you're dealing with jealous family members, you can tell because in your up moments, they are rarely around. But then when you have those extreme down moments, and we do need people around when we go through those down moments, but you will see who's around more so when you're down than when you're up. Let you call somebody and say that you've had a promotion on your job. Look, I wanna go out, I wanna have a good time, go out to dinner, it's my treat, let's go out. I know for me, and this is full transparency, back when I was younger and I was still all, you know, I'm still excited about my life, but back when I was loose lipped, where I was just constantly telling everybody everything, when I would get a promotion on my job, 
but I would get the little merit increase. They give you that 50 cent to a dollar. It's still a raise. I was excited. And I would call up certain family members and say, hey, you know, I just had a promotion on my job, you know, and, you know, I'm really happy about this. You know, I want to go out on Friday. You want to come? You know, it's my treat. Just come, show up, get cute. We're going to go out. It'll be nice. And you can hear the dryness in their voice on the phone as they're making up an excuse as to why they can't go out. And even to that point, let's get it more in this era, social media. The one thing I dislike about TikTok is that you can post something and even if someone doesn't like it, you can see who saw your post and pretty much chose to ignore it. So to that point of me saying this is that you ever post something really cute of yourself online on Facebook, but you really can't tell if somebody saw it on Facebook, but on TikTok, you can. You post a cute picture of yourself, an inspirational post, whatever you might have post, and you have family members on there. And you can see that they saw it because you see their little face with that yellow icon scroll through, and yet you know they saw it but they didn't like it. And you're wondering like, wow, cuz I can't get a like, I can't get a comment, a share, nothing. It's because sometimes your family members, they see you, they're aware of you, but once again, it's hard for them to celebrate you because you came from the same place they came from. You, you supposed to be the same way. And then sometimes when people are going through things in their own life, and now this is a little bit of a step away from jealousy, when people are going through their own things, for people who are like myself, who can have things going on in your life, but still be happy for other people, everybody isn't like that. And you have some family members that they might see you, they might think to themselves, okay, good for her, but their life sucks right now. So I just can't celebrate this. And... People like me, if you're, like I said, you're the kind of person that, you know, no matter what you're going through, you still can at least give a half clap for somebody. But everybody isn't that way. And I say that to say, when you see things like that, where it looks like your family just kind of ignored whatever you're doing, try not to take it personal. Because sometimes people truly are just going through their own things. But there are sometimes, and this is a personal thing about me, I make handmade jewelry. I've been sharing my jewelry for years and I always say thank God for the kindness of strangers because I haven't really had too many family members buy anything from me. They see what I'm doing, they see me promoting and it's like I don't exist. The things that they will clap for, oh the kids they did this, good, but anything pertaining to your come up, making money or doing better in that area, especially of finance, I'm just going to say how it is because I believe as leveled up feminine women, self-aware, world-aware women, you should know this. Some of your biggest supporters will be strangers. Even in scripture, you know for me, if you've been watching me any amount of time, even in scripture, Jesus was not accepted by his own. He went back to Nazareth and they said, oh, that's just a carpenter's son, okay? Pretty much what they were saying is that, oh, we know him. He used to be down there with his dad doing carpentry not a big deal. People, we're nothing like God, not that comparison. But my point of saying that is that people will have the same mentality with their own family. Oh, that's just them. That's just you. You will not get that kind of support more times than not from family members. And as I said in previous videos, they want to see you eat just not more than them. So because of that, when it comes to making money and your financial stability and growing in your business, you have to thank God for the kindness of strangers because your family members will not be your biggest supporters oftentimes. They will not be your biggest buyers. I've gotten maybe five sales in the five years that I've been online from family members. It's always been strangers. It's that familiarity they have with you. They saw you when you was just little old, you know, little old you. And now they see you doing these big things and they just can't receive it sometimes for some reason or not. And your job is to not take that personal and to trust and know that their little weirdness, jealousy, whatever it might be, 
it's not you, it's them. Stay focused. So especially, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on that for a moment. Because when we start a new business, when we go into different ventures, we automatically think our family's going to swoop in and they're going to be the ones to make us millionaires. They're not. They're not. At the minimum, at the maximum, they might say, oh, you're doing your thing. Good job. Are they going to help you to elevate? No, they're not. Thank God for the kindness of strangers. All right. And I'm going to do a whole nother video on how when you level up financially, your family is not going to be the main ones who are going to help you get there. And you're going to have to know how to be that person that is willing to go outside of your comfort zone in order to elevate financially. Because family, they're not going to do it. I mean, they might mean well, but they're not going to do it. And to expect it to be otherwise as women, sometimes we just have to come to the realization that family just cannot celebrate you in that way because they saw where you came from. I know there's some people probably listening to me now and probably realize like, isn't that so-and-so's, what you call it? Isn't that her daughter? The, you know, and it's that little, oh, that's cute. When you're past that, oh, that's cute phase. You know what I mean? I hope the girls who are watching this get it. But your family, as much as you love them, Sometimes they have that little hidden jealousy, that negativity and toxicity that you really have to protect yourself from as you grow up, as you become a woman. Be mindful of how much you're sharing with them and with who. And then as far as support, as much as you would love your family to be your biggest supporters, this doesn't go for all families. I would like to think that this side of the internet is very smart. But unfortunately, a lot of times when you're talking about financially leveling up, your family is not going to be your biggest supporters and you have to come to that realization. So when you're dealing with jealousy from family members and especially siblings, sometimes it's because they see you came from the same stock, you came from the same environment and they chose to stay stuck and you did not. That is not your fault. You have to be there for them as much as you can, but don't allow their negative talk. And they like to give you these speeches as if some way you sold out because you chose better. You did not sell out. You chose to be the person, the woman that God wanted you to be. And don't let, allow any jealous family members to hold you back from being that person because they chose something different. All right like and subscribe to the channel and share this content hit the notification bell so that you're aware when i post a brand new video if you watch this video until the very end hit the high hill emoji i absolutely appreciate you take care